It feels like the 1960s and 1970s were eras where Spider-Man writers had a supervillain quota they needed to fill, so they just churned out as many as they could regardless of the quality. I mean, we got Pace Pot Pete, typeface who just writes letters aggressively on his face, a man named Frank Oliver who, after getting bitten by a radioactive kangaroo, was granted the abilities of a kangaroo. And then we got the big man himself, the lamest of them all, Big Wheel. Whatever drove them to create Big Wheel, I'm happy they did so. Because Big Wheel is probably the most ludicrous Spider-Man villain there could ever be. Big Wheel, true to his name, drives around a giant mechanical monowheel with mounted machine guns as his vehicle. Not only is it a hideous waste of machine parts and mobility, it's also just plain old dumb. Like, why not just build a tank? Or a jet? Or a robot? Moreover, Wheel doesn't have any superpower. If he runs out of gas, then it's over for him. Like, just imagine going to a gas station and you see a dude outside of a big wheel struggling to pump it with gas because it's a fucking monolith of a wheel. It's just so funny to me personally because of how awfully impractical his whole shtick is. But I guess the sort of cool thing though is that the big wheel itself looks like those speeder things from the Revenge of the Sith. But why did the big wheel come to be? How did the big wheel's life get so bad that he decided to make a really big wheel and attempt a life at crime? Is big wheel's life really that deep, carrying some insightful message behind why he exists, or am I just making a video about big wheel that'll attempt to make him look deep, but utterly fail in the process? Well, we'll find out after going over the entire story, which is big wheel's life. Way, way back in time, our story starts with a guy named Jackson Wheel. I wonder where his life will go in the future given that last name. That totally isn't the most uninspired foreshadowing there is. Well, anyways, Jackson Wheel was a corrupt businessman who embezzled money from his company. Soon after, he hired the Rocket Racer, a somewhat competent villain, to steal documents that would incriminate him. Racer delivered the documents to Wheel, but withheld the Minerva document the most damning piece of evidence there was. And in doing so, he would demand Wheel to give him an additional $10,000 or else he would turn the evidence over to the authorities. Distraught, Wheel went to the docks to commit suicide, but was saved at the very last second by the racer, who still demanded full payment. Jesus. The racer told Wheel that with his tinkerer-built jet-powered skateboard, he could continue to hound Wheel until he paid up even if he was suicidal. Which I feel like I could see in the boys' TV show. But the mention of the Tinkerer gave Wheel an idea. So Wheel later hired the Tinkerer to create for him a weapon powerful enough to take on the Rocket Racer. Inspired by Wheel's name and the nickname given to him by Rocket Racer, he would be known as the Big Wheel. So the Tinkerer for shits and giggles created a giant armored monowheel outfitted with machine guns and rocket launchers. Afterwards, Wheel ambushed the Rocket Racer while he was in the middle of a fight with Spider-Man, and the Racer tried to flee by weaving in and out of traffic, but the Big Wheel just crushed all cars in its path. The Racer the racer then skated up the side of a building, but despite its great size, the big wheel managed to follow. Spider-Man moments later then apprehended the rocket racer and managed to get racer out of the way seconds before the big wheel crushed them. Unable to stop in time, the big wheel drove off the side of the building and fell into the Hudson River. To seemingly die in a big metal wheel underwater, fated to drown to death because of his inability to accept the consequences of his actions. Rest in peace, big wheel. Let's have a moment of silence for the lamest Spider-Man villain ever. Actually, Big Wheel didn't die. Hooray? See, what had happened was the wheel had been made to be airtight, and the fiasco made him realize the error of his ways, so he went home to accept the consequences of his actions, and his wife Margaret walked out on him. Jackson went to prison, where he joined a 12-step program for supervillains called Vil Anon. Step 9 of the program involved making amends with those he wronged, so he decided to help Spider-Man fight crime. And after a failed attempt at capturing Stiltman, and a successful yet destructive attempt at stopping the Shocker from robbing a bank, after nearly crushing the Shocker to death like a fucking Mortal Kombat fatality. But despite this happening, Spider-Man encouraged Wheel to follow a different career path. So Wheel did just that, taking Spider-Man's advice, and started to perform at monster truck rallies, crushing cars, and became a spokesperson for Villain On, and would seemingly get a somewhat peaceful conclusion. 
However, by the time of the superhuman civil war, Wheel for some reason had returned to a life of crime, joining a black market network that specialized in super tech. Iron Man had became aware of this network during his efforts to thwart one of its clients, Ezekiel Stain, so Spider-Man tagged along with Iron Man to shut it down. During this whole event, Wheel panicked when the heroes came after him and bursted out of his home on the Big Wheel, thus leading Iron Man and Spider-Man to work together and stop Big Wheel and arrest him. After which, Big Wheel practically became a joke villain, showing up at random comics like his appearance in Ghost Rider comics. When Blackout assembled a team to kill both the Ghost Riders, Johnny Blaze, and his brother, Daniel Catch, Big Wheel was one of the supervillains hired into the group. Wheel was the first to attack the two brothers and eventually confronted Blaze alone. His Big Wheel was destroyed and Blaze used the pen and stare on Jackson to incapacitate him. After this whole mess that should have strayed Big Wheel off the path of crime yet again, Big Wheel just said, nah, I'm gonna give it another chance. So in an effort to smuggle a black market machine, Big Wheel had fallen off of a cliff, sustaining traumatic injuries that left him in a coma. Until months later, he would awake after a cosmically empowered Iron Man temporarily boosted the collective brain power of the entirety of New York City. And due to Big Wheel's mind suddenly developing an idea to solve traffic congestion, returning to his Big Wheel, Jackson equipped it with laser pulses capable of reprogramming vehicles with a supercomputed algorithm that improved their transit. Big Wheel went on a rampage to enact his plan, but he was stopped by Iron Man and his partner Hellcat, who only realized Jackson was intending to do a good thing after disassembling his wheel, which brings us to the end of Big Wheel's story. Not really much to say about it, if I'm going to be honest with you, so I guess I failed to make it seem like Big Wheel's story was insightful in any comprehensible way. But I guess we all learned that maybe if we do want to get vengeance on someone, maybe doing it in a huge monowheel that could hurt you more than anything else isn't the way to do it. But anyways, that was Big Wheel, Spider-Man's lamest villain. Looking to do this video, I swear it amazes me the villains that were created, like Doughboy, for instance, a villain strictly made of dough, or better yet, Lady Stiltman. Lady Stiltman. Jesus Christ.